to me, when you're working with young men, it's it's all about trust. You know, they got to trust me that I can continue to help them and elevate their game. But it's also about relationships for me. You know, the old adage is people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. You know, and that's just the way it is. That's the way I've, I've always coached. You know, so to me, it's like trust is built, right? How can you play for me or how can you, you know, we just, so we just got to get to that place of trust. And then, and, 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 and uh, that's getting to know each other, you know, uh, uh, spending time with each other and so on. But, you know, you want to build it to the place where, you know, it's third and ten and you got to win this down to win the game. I got to be able to trust you to get that done. You know, that's the kind of level of trust that we have to have. Most of the guys on the staff had a connection to Chris Kleiman or Colin was here yeah. before. How did Mike Tuyasasopo end up? No, oh, you know, that was asked earlier, and I'm glad to answer it again, you know. Uh, it really came down to a mutual friend of of uh, of the, the special teams coordinator, the, the Denver Broncos. Tom McMahon was my graduate assistant at Utah State. And he, so, he, you know, he and I both knew Ted Monachino. It's kind of how it all oh, okay. got started. So Coach McMahon and Ted Monachino worked together for Chuck Pagano at the Indianapolis Colts. So I guess when the name came up, there was some interest there, and you know that's kind of where the ball started rolling. So how much of a chance have you had to familiarize yourself with kind of what you're inheriting as far as the position group? Well, I've I've watched uh, three morning workouts now, been around them, uh, watched their movement, and watched what kind of group we have. You know, I would say, you know, with those guys that have played here, you know, I would hope that it's a strength of the team. You're talking about Trey Dijon, Wyatt. You're talking about Reggie Walker. Those guys have played a lot of ball. And I would expect that they would be, they would lead our team with their play. But there's, there's a, I'm excited to coach them because I think they're a talented bunch. Your recruiting roots are obviously getting K-State into some areas mm -hmm. that aren't typical for this program. How beneficial yeah. is it to go out that way? Well, honestly, I wish I could comment on the guys, but I can't comment on them yet. But I think it's important. You know, you look at a program like Iowa State, they're making inroads out west. You know, the quarterback is from, from Phoenix. You know, uh, their nose guard, I've known him when he was out in high school in L.A., the, the Ray Lima uh you know, so, you know, and when you're out west representing Kansas State, you notice things like that more, you know, and they've done a great job. And those are the kinds of things that we have to do. We need to do. We should do. How crazy has the recruiting been for you personally? I mean, crazy. obviously you were a late addition to the staff. <laughs> crazy. I've driven eight hours. I've uh, it's taken me three and a half hours to get from Kansas City here on a snowstorm. I've been all over the place, but it's been wonderful. I've... I uh, I absolutely feel rejuvenated to 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 really work hard on the road. No I know, question. I know, I know that obviously you weren't around the, the facility obviously yeah. during the season, but is there a do you feel like there's just a a sense of maybe new life, new energy, kind of buzzing with the players, with everybody here right now? You know, just watching their step as you know, like I said, we I've seen three workouts so far, just to watch the way they work. You know, they I love it. They 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 work together. You know, they encourage each other. They're good teammates, you know. And, uh, you know, I, like, you know, you, you said, I don't know what it was like before, but it looks good to me, you know. But, you know, I mean, you know, spring ball is ahead, and, you know, we'll see. How, how do you sell K-State to kids on the West Coast that probably don't have as much familiarity with the school? You know, the uh, that's a really good question. The one of the very first things I say to coaches and, and the young people I get come across is the greatest turnaround in the history of college football happened right here. That's a big deal. And people out West, believe it or not, know that. You know, so the brand that Coach Snyder created here and, and, and the K-State brand, trust me, people out West know about it. You know, uh, when you guys have, when K-State has gone on and play the USC's of the world, they played them well, and, you know, it's just, you know, trust me, they, so you sell that. You sell the newness of Coach Kleiman and the staff and their track record of winning championships. That's what you sell. Yeah.
Coach uh, was the plan for you? Beg your pardon? Uh, way back when was Coach Young was getting into coaching, was that the plan for you initially? You know, it's funny because coaching is, uh, you know, I was like maybe a gym rat, you know. I was always co competitive when it came to sports, you know, and I just, you know, I, I won't say I stumbled onto it, but I loved it so much from a coaching standpoint that I just kept working at it and working at it and, and, and so on. And uh, I'm just thrilled to have had, uh, you know, this opportunity. You know, I've coached at some cool places, you know, and uh, this is as cool as any as I've been, to be honest with you, you know, so. What does football mean to your family? You hear the name all over the place, but I guess it's yeah. just ingrained in your family's oh, yeah, culture. It's, uh, yeah, I mean. You know, my daughters would like to do <laughs> that, but no, it's, you know, it's, uh, we've been very blessed that many of our family have played and coached the game, and, uh, but, uh, no, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's cool, it's cool, to, you know, and, uh, it's a recognizable name from, you know, you like to be recognized more than things other than football, but it is what it is, so. NFL internships as well. Uh, yeah. Just what did you bring from the pull away from those experiences? Well, you know, in 2013, I spent a month with the Chiefs, and uh, one of the great benefits there for me was, you know, I had never really for it, this is for instance now. Uh, one of the great things for me in that experience was learning more about three-four defense, whereas I had never had that much experience in it before. And so being able to be a part of being around that was really, really a lot of fun for me, you know. And then uh, when I, you know, when I was with the Packers, and I can't even remember how back, uh, you know, there's a lot of carryover to what we we hope to do here defensively. So, yeah. I'm sorry. Did, did Coach Dimmel have anything to say about K-State to you when this began? Oh, uh, this is his home. This is his, this is his alma mater, you know. I know this is a special place to him. You know, I've worked with, like I said, we've worked, I've worked with a lot of people tied to K-State. You know, I think of Eric Wolford, you know. Uh, he and I coached together in Arizona. You know, I know this place is very dear to him. And uh, I know it is for Coach Demo, you know. So I think it was hard for him to see me go, but he was happy that it was to his alma mater.